All right, traders, welcome to today's recap. This is Christian from Hertz, Tribeca Trade Group, and it is Monday, first day of the year. So, you know, a little bit different uh, day than what probably people were, were thinking for today. Um, you know, futures kind of came into the open up and, um, you know, some traders may be looking for a little bit of continuation off of that and uh, it got thumped a little bit. So, um, we'll kind of review that. Um, you could see I've got uh, theme of the day is um, reversal day for the indices. But I would add too, you know, not just today, but I think many of the growth names really started to kind of to weaken uh, last week. And uh, there was quite a bit of rotation last week. So that that weakness was masked a little bit. You know, if you looked at, you know, what the S&P was doing, uh, if you looked at the, what the Qs were doing last week, um, there wasn't any really major move down in those. But, um, you know, there was a little bit more rotation into value. And, um, yeah, those growth names started to pull back last week. And then today, kind of, you know, the bottom fell out a little bit in just in, in most stocks for the day. So first things first, risk, first things first, risk disclaimer in front of you. Everything that we're going through is for information purposes only, education only, not giving out any advice, recommendations. And um, I also, I'm on, I'm traveling this week. I'm doing, I have a little bit of vacation. So I'll kind of be, you'll see, um, you know, video from me today, but you, but you won't see one every day this week. Uh, I'll be doing some skiing when the conditions are, hopefully the conditions will be decent tomorrow and we'll see if I can get another day of, of skiing in. So just to kind of give you a heads up and know what my schedule is for the week. I don't go on a lot of vacations, but it is good to get away a little bit here and there. So that's what I'm doing this week. So um, SPY finished down what? Down 1.3%. So not a lot of, you know, not a lot of separation there. I can't really see anything that was a really, you know, had strong relative strength out of the indices. So that's why I kind of think it was a little bit of a washout day. But, you know, some things kind of came back. Um, you know, first of all, just to kind of round this out here in the top category, um, bonds really didn't do much for the day. Like, you know, they finished down on the day. So um, the takeaway for me, and I'll, you know, kind of getting to the conclusion uh, right away here, but, you know, I think that, um, you know, we got some sell signals last week or, or some weak, I don't want to say sell signals, but some weakness signals, right? One of the things that I pointed out last week was, um, you know, this, this McClellan summation index, I even put on Twitter, for example, like how I use it, you know, when we have a signal, right, when basically the, the um, I use the 10 day moving average, when that drops below the, this nice line, this McClellan summation index, uh, the translation is, is that um, kind of the, the wind is against you, right, upside momentum has stalled. And, um, and then further, it means, you know, to kind of, so, so the, so what of that is, you know, what do you do with that is just be a little bit more defensive. So smaller number of positions, maybe, um, you know, trading less options, you know, holding less options, uh, because they are a bit more volatile. And I think if, um, it, you know, if some of you listen to what I said, you know, again, I'm not, I'm telling you what I'm doing, but if some of you, some of you agreed with what I said last week, that, that the market was getting weaker, and we did see some of those signs, um, you know, un, under the hood, then, you know, reducing some positions saved you a little bit today. And, um, you know, helped out a little bit. You know, remember, if you if you kind of read the tea leaves a little bit like this, uh, you can get yourself in just much better of a position, right? We talked about, uh, you know, one of my last videos of last week, was, I was talking about, you know, if you get caught in one of these situations where, you know, the market's falling, volatility is, is increasing, that, um, you know, you begin to kind of, you're, you're running around like a, like a chicken with its head cut off. That was my analogy from last week, right? Which is not a great place to be trading it. But if you make some of these adjustments and moves that we talked about over the last two weeks in, in the trading room, that um, you could be more, you, you could be playing a little bit more offense than defense on days like this, right? You're actually looking for the pullback and looking for things uh, that you can kind of buy into weakness. Um, rather than, you know, getting stopped out. Now, I did get stopped out in a couple trades. Um, that's That happens to me because I never take off all my positions, right? I leave some things on. I make some adjustments. I do force some exits in a couple things. But, um, yeah, so to kind of go, go over the rest of the review here in, in, uh, in the indices, um, gold and silver, very strong today, right? They held the gains, right? We talked about that pre-market. Gold did come in a little bit, uh, <coughs> from the open, but 
um, all kinds of, of option activity, you know, come, coming into play today. Um, my view on that, on the gold and silver, I always think gold and silver are a little bit trickier. Um, so the fact that they're buying all kinds of gold things when gold is already up, it's a little bit of chasing, right? Um, I think silver, we talked about silver last week, how it was showing uh, some some strength. I liked silver over gold. We were talking about a name that saw option activity today. We were talking about PASS, or sorry, the other one, PAAS, right, as a, as a really good technical si signal. You could see my post from last week on Twitter that I talked about this one. Remember also, I thought this was a pretty good trade. Uh, this was about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, where we, where we saw a big block of 10,000 calls go up in the Silver Miner Junior ETF. So they got this one right. In my opinion, that's the time to be like, you know, if you want to position in some of these things, that kind of flow helps. When they're buying all this stuff, when, it's, when gold and silver is up, you know, 4%, uh, it's tough, you know. So I didn't buy any of this today. Um, gold was one name that we saw some calls in. Um, we also saw some calls in GLD. Now, it is doing something different here. So it's been bottled up for a while. I just don't like chasing <laughs> when they're up this much. I like to see the smart, you know, people talk about option flow sometimes and they say smart money, which I hate that term. But that was pretty smart stuff to be pre-positioning, like in the silver miner stuff. The stuff today, if you're buying GLD today up 2.2%, I don't really view that as smart. Uh, or I wouldn't call that smart money. I would, I would, I, I'm not sure that I would refer to it as dumb money either. But it's just not, not as great as a signal as we, if we would have saw something last week. And like I said, we did see some posi positioning by a little bit more savvy traders, right? And that PAAS that we talked about last week, um, certainly worked, right? I talked about this at the end of the week. Um, so, you know, nice gain in this one, up 8%. Really, really nice move here. And nice and pretty nice looking chart. I think this one could continue. Um, you know, got, you got nice volume on this on this break higher, right? So, um, yeah, so that was kind of the, one of the most interesting things that I saw today. Um, and I was in and out of the room today. Um, we had some tech issues <laughs> besides being away on vacation, some tech issues to deal with. So a little bit of everything when you go on vacation, volatility, that works. Let's look at the VIX really quick, right? So up about 18% today. Um, what that touched, I think like 28, 29, um, it closed at 27. So, so a little bit off the highs. Um, I can't, I don't think you could really draw a conclusion. It's nice that it didn't close on the highs. You know, anything, you know, when you see it close right on the highs, sometimes you'll get that continuation the next day. I'm not so sure that we'll get that tomorrow. What about um, sometimes if we look at the VVIX, which is the volatility of the VIX itself, sometimes it gives a little bit of clues. It didn't close on the highs there either. So, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what it's, you know, people always ask me, well, what do you think is going to happen tomorrow? I don't know. And if you don't know, then, you know, I, what I did today was scale into some positions. So let me talk about that. You know, I like to go into, obviously, um, how my day unfolded. But, you know, I had some trades on from, from last week that were really <laughs> working for me um, until, the, uh, until the market got thumped. Um, and I'll go over the indices too. Uh, I'll make sure I do that in this video too. But like Caterpillar was one trade. The Caterpillar still finished positive for the day, but this thing was up like a good 2%. So I took profits on some of the stuff. And then, um, you know, I left my last position. I left my last position on till about 11 o'clock and then it got back to right around my cost basis. So I said, all right, well, you know, let's not, let's not make a nice profitable trade um, and let's not lose money on it. So, you know, I took my targets here in the beginning of the day, um, target one, target two, about 15 minutes after the open, 580 paid 450. So that worked out pretty well. NEO was a name that I put on last week um, because there's a catalyst for the stock. I love the catalysts. You know, when you have um, an event, they had two events, right? So they reported their monthly sales number, and then they have their analyst day this week. In my opinion, it's, it's, I find better trade setups when you play for a run into the event than the event itself. So uh, I got it today, you know, up close to 10% on the day. 
bang, you know, nice, nice looking trade today in this NEO. And the whole group moved, right? So XPEV was up 3%, so let to a lesser extent. And then the other one, LI, also good looking chart, um, also closed. Uh, you know, back inside value, right? New valuary for the month of Ju of January, by the way. You know, this thing looks like it could have some continuation to it. 3471, possibly where it could run into. Neo, uh, I'm holding, you know, I took two targets in my trade that I added last week and um, I'm holding the balance. You know, maybe this thing can kind of push to new highs. That would be nice. All right, and um, NVIDIA kind of gave a big tease, right? Um, this thing finished up on the day, um, but let me zoom in here. So I will give you some levels that I care about. Um, it would be 537.22. This name saw call buying early on. More or less, I think the, the momentum call buying, you know, traders see something up, they buy it, think it's going to have some continuation to it. Um, it's basically right back to where it was on Thursday. However, you know, I took advantage of it and I sold into the strength. So I had put on a, what's called the limited risk reversal. So I was long a call, short a put spread, and I sold the call for 10 bucks, right? Anytime something like this, where you put a trade on in two days, uh, it bounce, it moves up like this, I will take some, some sort of profits. And then, of course, what I could always do is, um, is uh, you know, roll the trade, which is what I did. And, um, you know, I put this trade out for 537. It started to work again. I took a target at um, 540 ish and um, 543. And then I just, I bailed on the, on the rest of it. Um, you know, fine. I, I don't mind losing a, a little bit of money on a stock where I made a lot of money on the options, right? That's just how I sometimes roll the position. Um, I also took, took this position off in Visa um, a name that uh, I made a lot of money in and I rolled a position. Well, the roll didn't work. That's okay. All right. So that's going to happen, especially like on a day like this. Um, let's see where pure storage, there was a rumor. This is just basically a rumor that happened. I like the name. I like that it held the 20 day moving average. I took, I took one target in this thing around the highs of the day at 24 bucks. Um, so, you know, first target gone for profits and we're, we'll see where it settles in again. This was had, um, call it chatter in the name today. Um, a couple names I did get, so I mentioned the Visa, I got uh, stopped that on the balance. Also this pen, um, I didn't like the price action. Let's see if it, did it come back today? Uh, down 6%. I mean, I think it could go down lower. I think it could go down to 76. So I bailed on this thing. Um, that usually happens to me in one trade when we have a sell-off is I have a bad exit or something like that. But uh, that's, that's, uh, that's pen. Um, UNH was a nice day trade. I could have kept this on a little bit longer. Um, clearly uh, made a nice move today, right around the lows. I, I, as soon as the story came out about Amazon and JP Morgan, uh, speaking of bailing, they, they bailed on this uh, healthcare initiative that they have. And um, the UNH, uh, WBA, which we saw calls on Friday. I, I keep saying Friday, but it was Thursday. Uh, we saw an early call buyer in WBA up 3.8% CVS. So all the managed care type names uh, did very well um, on that news. And again, UNH, which was down huge, uh, came back. So I, I left some money on the, on the, on the tape with this, uh, with this one, but that's okay. Uh, that's okay. It was still a profitable, nice profitable trade. Um, and then I took a shot on a couple names here, um, one in the afternoon, um, one that hasn't come in that much, but ENPH. I, I do like the solar names here, so I'm, I'm up a little bit in this one. And then, you know, you could really pick, right? Because a lot of these names look similar. I, it's funny when I, um, when I see someone ask me about, you know, one of these names that are like in the gro high growth software space, they all look so similar to me. Um, Twilio finished, you know, you got a nice hammer bar. It's, it's got to really show that it's going to turn here, but I do like the beginnings of, a, of, you know, trying to, you know, find some support. Look where it found support, very close to the, to the uh, bottom of value. So I took a shot in this one. Uh, I'll be scaling in if it goes lower tomorrow. I will add to it. You know, Twilio, or TTD is another one that I mentioned last week, right? Well, we talked about how this one could go down to 
um, about 775. And if you look on the one hour chart, it did take this level out, you know, right in the beginning of the day. So I didn't put this one on because I, you know, there's no confirmation yet that the bottom is in, but it's on the watch list. Um, speaking of other names, uh, Zoom made a nice, have made a nice move today. There was some call activity in this one. Um, this one did not get down to where I thought it could get to, which I think was right around 300, I mentioned. So, um, you know, basically down here. So it could, you know, maybe it turns here and starts to kind of, you know, reverse itself. If you're looking at this name now, I would watch this, that 360 level. All right. A couple other names that showed um, some decent fight to them today. Lulu, right? Um, this was brought to my attention by a member today, but we talked about Lulu last week, how it was at an interesting point. Um, take a look. Right, so it explored lower levels this morning and closed inside value. So now, if you want to, you could trade this versus 353. I think a pretty decent setup, in my opinion. Again, I didn't put this one on because you know I don't like to go crazy uh, when you know just because there's some red on the tape. You know, I like to be a little bit um, you know like a surgeon. You know, adding a couple things here and there. But this Lulu again, 353 line in the sand on the on the one hour chart as well which is the top of value. So um, that's a couple things for the, for the day. You know, there's, there'll be, there's a lot more um, setups. I think um, overall, my opinion of this weakness on the tape, um, could it last for a little bit? It could, right? So we, again, you know, going back to this analysis that we talked about with the, um, with the McClellan oscillator, also, you know, I was looking at Helene Meisler's poll from the weekend, right? Everybody's just too bullish, right? Um, you know, next 100, uh, next 100 points in the S&P, you know, once again, everybody voting up, right? So, the, you know, two, there's two, the consensus has got too, too, too much to one side, too much to one side of the fence. Now, w what helps in this matter when people get shaken out like this, when there's some volatility in the tape? So if, if, you, hung, if you hung in there today and you made some of those adjust adjustments that we talked about last week, uh, you're, in, you're in a much better spot. And you could start to look for some of these, um, you know, some of some of these names that are now showing that that have had a decent pullback. All right, so I'm I'm pretty excited and pumped, you know, about today's price action. I think this needed to happen. Could it happen for a couple more days? It definitely could. But you know, this is where the buying opportunities are start to emerge in names that have been have had, you know, not just a pullback today, but you know, a pullback last week as well. All right, guys. So that's it for today's video. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.